Next up, we have Jimmy Thomas of Tennessee. Uh, what are your favorite ways to get in close to gobblers, and, and what criteria must be met when looking for the right spot to set up? Uh, how close do you get? Really, I just, I kind of, I mean, I like to get close. I, I have gotten too close before, and as we all probably have, and, and it ended up biting me. And um, so I tend to look situation specific and say, well, it, if I have experience with the bird, then I'm trying to obviously figure out he typically moved in this direction type of thing. If I don't have experience with the bird, which is usually the case, then I'm looking for spots, again, that require him, one, that I can hide, have a good backdrop, I'm not silhouetted, um, you know, high ground if I can get it. If it's flat ground, then I'm not worried about it. Uh, something that's going to force him to walk out from behind something, over something, past something, whatever to put him in a situation where he's within range. That's usually what I'm looking for. But as you know, I mean, sometimes I mean, you, you can't really control any of that. You just plop your butt down and, and hope it works out. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, you're moving, you know, you're up and moving anyway. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that 100%. Um, do you guys have any input on that one, or do you want to roll on I, to the next one? I kind of wanted to expand on that. You know, um, you mentioned choosing the high ground, or if it's on flat ground, not mattering. I've heard and I've gotten my butt kicked by making the wrong decision, but why is it that birds don't want to go downhill? Why is having the upper hand in that elevation help you? If you, if you kind of look at this bird's ecology, what they're, you know, those toms want to, they want to put sound on the environment. So, God, they want that sound to carry. And they want to avoid predation while also attracting attention to themselves. So you wrap all that together and you're like, okay, here's a showy, obnoxious, gaudy bird that calls and looks really, you know, bizarre and beautiful and iridescent, but they don't want to die. So if you're going to take that strategy, always be above what's coming to you. So your sound carries, your sight carries, you're visible from a distance, whereas if you're low and what's coming to you, whether it's good or bad, is from above you you're at a disadvantage so it makes sense to me to the bird that the birds would act like that now i've seen some birds just defy that ever all of us have i've had birds yeah. come downhill i've had birds do crazy stuff um and i've had some birds that refuse to come uphill that just for whatever reason they wanted to i called it um ridge straddling they basically just get halfway up the slope and just walk down the slope one way or the other and just refuse to come up to the top. Um, to me, that's usually a situation where, that, I, if I had to have a guess, that bird's experienced pressure before <laughs> knows how to avoid it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the high ground argument, you know, to me makes sense. I tell you where, where birds have screwed me the most is always been on flat ground and I, I spent years and years as a student and a professional in the flat ground of mississippi and louisiana and that that's I, you know i spent seven years in mississippi living in the delta it's entirely flat flood prone forest at the time lots of turkeys no longer the case for a variety of issues because of a variety of issues and then louisiana everywhere i hunted there was it was pretty much flat ground and and you would think birds would just run across, no problem. And there, inevitably, there's something that would screw me every time on these birds, whether it was a little a piece of a bayou, a little dip, a little ditch, a little this, a little that. And I just found it maddening sometimes that the bird would not walk 
over or past or whatever this really subtle feature that you know damn well they they're capable of navigating they just <laughs> refused to do it um, sure. I, those are the birds that just frustrated me the most where I, I can't think of any exceptions to this we're all flat ground birds just mad <laughs> see that one stone in the way and that that was number 50 so i'm not going that direction <laughs> but, but then you get that one bird that'll just he'll literally go through anything to get to you yeah. he's only encountered 37 things to stop <laughs> yeah. i mean we got we'll run yeah, in, we I, in a lot I, of it's a lot of swamp here and you get a bird something birds just fired up and they'll go through swamps cricks fences and everything to get to you but then the next one won't <laughs> yep yep it's pretty crazy I, I had a bird sail off of a, a mountain once in virginia and i don't know how far this bird flew and i could go back and figure it out at the time i was so dumbfounded i didn't care but this bird literally pitched off the side of a mountain and ended up flying over my head and landing on the ridge behind me and i killed him Wow. And this bird, I don't even know how far it was, it, it, to the point where when he was gobbling, I, there was no way I was going to walk after him. That's how far. I mean, he was so far away. I'm not even considered going over there because, one, I'll die trying to get there. <laughs> and, and, two, it'll probably be noon before I could get to where he's roosted. So I'll just sit here and call really loud. <laughs> and damn if it didn't work. And like you just said, sometimes they'll just move them out to get to you. Mm -hmm.